truly this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and to God be the glory for the great things our God has done. We are so delighted that you have joined us this morning to worship our gracious and our glorious God. And on behalf of Pastor Cannon and Reverend Pastor Lanson, we are so thankful and we welcome you to praise God on this beautiful Sunday morning. My life was torn beyond repair. I felt so alone. It's like no one cared. But you came along and gave me a song to ease the pain and erase the strain. You could be standing there with no no one to care, but you promised me. Against all odds, I made the choice to give you my trust. Now I rejoice. You answer my prayers, not a moment too soon. Your word. to know that the God we serve will do just what he said. He could have left us standing there with no one to care, but it's a blessing that God will and God will always do what God said God would do. I don't know about you, but I'm happy in my soul this morning to know that the God we serve is such a loving and kind and compassion God, compassionate God. And he will do what he said he what he said he would do right where you are. I don't know if you are in your living room. I don't know exactly where you may be as you are tuned into this worship experience today. But right where you are, wherever you are, that space, just make it a place of, of worship. Make that place a space, space of praise and make that space a place where you hear now from the Lord, because there is a word from God this morning. 
And we know that the grass withers. We know that the flowers may fade. But the word of our God shall, it shall stand forever. But before we go into the word, I just want to say that this week has certainly been one for the books. From Tuesday until yesterday, our nation and the world has have waited and watched as a result of the 2020 presidential election were reported. At certain times, it seemed if, if one ticket would win, then at other times, it seemed if, 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 if the other ticket would win. And back and forth for days, we waited to see the outcome. But then on yesterday, the race was called and history was made when the first woman can I say that again history was made when the first woman was elected and first woman of color was elected vice president of the United States of America and I don't know about you but I thank God I thank God I thank God for this history making moment I thank God that the glass ceiling has been broken. And I saw a Facebook post that said, attention all women, be sure to wear shoes because glass is everywhere. And I thank God that little girls from all over our nation no longer have to wonder if their dreams are possible. And so today, without getting into the politics of it all, can we just take a moment to celebrate this pivotal point in history and this monumental moment for women? And as our vice president-elect said last night, she may be the first woman to hold this office, but she won't be the last. And for that, we give God praise. The nation has spoken through the democratic process and we have a new president-elect. And it's my prayer, as I hope it is yours, that the process of healing and unification can continue so that we can move forward to a better future in our country. And now let's go, friends, to the Word of God. Found in Psalm 116, from the 116th Psalm, beginning with verse number one. 116 verse number one psalm 116 verse one and i'll be reading from the new international version of god's word hear now what the spirit will say to us on today the psalmist declares i love the lord for he heard my voice he heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me i will call on him as long as i live the cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Verse 6 says, the Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, the psalmist declares, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Friends, this is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And so today, with the help of Almighty God, I'd like to tag this text with the title, God Can and God Will. God Can and God Will. Siblings, there are a lot of things in life we have to look for. When we lose our keys, we have to look for them. When we misplace our cell phone, we have to look for it. But I stopped by to tell you this morning, there is one thing we don't have to look for, look for when, we, when we come upon it. We don't have to look for problems 
because problems have a tendency of showing up whether we want them to or not. Problems have a tendency of popping up without an invitation. And we all know it's rude to show up without an invitation, but problems don't care if they have an invitation or not because they will show up whenever, wherever, however, and to whomever they choose. It matters not the amount of money in your bank account. It matters not who you know. It matters not how much you love the Lord. Problems, issues, difficulties, situations, and trouble will come into all of our lives unannounced and uninvited. Have you ever been minding your own business and trying to stay out of everybody else's? When you receive bad news, have you ever been minding your own business when your boss started tripping or your child got in trouble? Have you ever been minding your own business and an unexpected bill came or the roof started leaking or the car stopped running? Or have you ever been minding your own business and then out of nowhere, a vicious virus called COVID-19 showed up without welcome and without warning? At the beginning of 2020, none of us knew that the coronavirus would infiltrate our world, revise our routines, disrupt our norms, take our loved ones, and prevent us from gathering in the house of the Lord. Think back to, to December 31st, 2019. Think back to New Year's Eve 2019. Many of us were looking forward to the coming of 2020 with great anticipation. We were looking forward to new adventures and fun vacations we had planned and we're looking forward to keeping our resolutions past two weeks into the new year. Those were the things we were looking forward to for 2020. Nobody was looking for a pandemic. But whether a pandemic or something else, the truth is we can be living on All Right Avenue one day and Lonely Lane the next. We can be living on Bless Boulevard today and Sorrow Street tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. That's why it's good for us to always remember the words of the hymn writer who penned these words. I don't worry about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. Many things about tomorrow, Lord have mercy, I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. In our text today, Psalm 116, we find the writer of this psalm reflecting on a difficult time of great discomfort and distress in his life. A time when he didn't know if he was going to live or die. A time when there was nothing he could do but depend on God to bring him through. Psalm 116 is written in response to that awful time in his life. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for the writer of Psalm 116. I thank God that he was willing to let us know he had some trouble in his life. I thank God that he was transparent enough to share his terrible ordeal with all of us through this song. Because some people, Lord have mercy. Some people don't want you to know when they're going through something. Some people don't, they don't want you to, they want you to believe that they never have a bad day. And while, I, while it's true, it's not wise to tell all of your business. There's nothing wrong with being honest enough to admit when things are not going well. If the truth be told, Due to this pandemic and the political unrest in our nation, many of us are not all right. And I came to tell somebody that it's all right to not be all right. Not only is it all right to not be all right, but it's all right to go get some help when you're not all right. A lot of times we, uh, we, 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 we back away from counseling and we think it has a negative uh, connotation to it or stigma to it. But there's nothing wrong with getting some help. Nothing wrong with getting some help. Nothing wrong with talking to somebody. Every day won't be a good day. Every now and then you just need to say, I need some help. 
Pray, yes. Lord knows we need to pray. Trust God, yes, we have to trust God. But if you need to talk to somebody, it's all right to say things are not going so good right now. That's why I appreciate the writer of Psalm 116. I appreciate him because, watch this, he pulls back the curtain of his life and reveals to us through this psalm that there was a time when things weren't going so good. And while we don't know all of the details of his affliction, we can gather from this psalm that it was terrible because it brought him to the brink of death. He went through a severe time of suffering that, that almost took his life. And yet, if you look at the text, even though he went through that hard time, if you look at the text in verse 1 of the psalm, he says, I love the Lord. I wonder if there's anybody listening today who loves the Lord. If you love the Lord this morning, why don't you just put a heart in the comments? Why, why don't you just put a heart in the chat? Because, see, anybody can love the Lord when things are going good. But can you still love God when things are crazy in your life? Can you still love God when things are not going so well? Not only does the psalmist tell us that he loves the Lord, but he tells us why. Lord have mercy. He tells us why he loves the Lord. For he says, if you look at the text in, in verse 1, he says, I love the Lord. Watch this. Because he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Lord, have mercy. He heard my cry for mercy. Can I hit the pause button right here and talk about mercy for just a moment? I can't pass over the word mercy right here because the psalmist didn't say God heard his cry for grace he said God heard his cry for mercy because you see grace is one thing but mercy is another grace if you don't mind me breaking this down is when you don't deserve something but you get it anyway can I say that again grace is when you don't deserve something but you get it anyway grace I'll say it again is when you don't deserve something Something, but you get it anyway. But mercy is a little bit different than grace. Mercy is when you do deserve something, but you don't get what you do deserve. Mercy is when you do deserve something, but you don't get what you do deserve. I'll help us this morning. You were speeding, and you know you were speeding, and you deserve to get a ticket when the officer pulled you over. But you didn't get a ticket because the officer wrote you a warning, and that, my friends, is called mercy. You deserved the ticket, but you didn't get the ticket because the officer had mercy on you. Oh, I came to tell you today that the psalmist didn't say anything about grace he skipped right over grace and he went straight to mercy because you see while we need both of them there are certain times in our lives when we need mercy more than we need grace and I don't know about you but while I thank God for grace I sure enough thank God for mercy because there have been times in my life can I just testify for a moment there have been times in my life when I deserve one one thing but God gave me another is there anybody listening to me right now who can look back over your life and think about a time when you deserve one thing God I feel like preaching now can you look back over your life at a time when you deserved one thing but God gave you another can you look back over your life at a time when you deserve ruin but God gave you riches when you deserve failure but God gave you success Success. when you deserved a loss but God gave you a win is there anybody here who can think anybody watching out there who can think of a time when you could have died but God let you live it is called mercy and can I give us a moment to pause right here and thank God for mercy you are still here that's mercy you live to tell the story 
mercy. Nobody found out mercy. You didn't get fired. Mercy. She took you back. Mercy. The bullet missed you. Mercy. You didn't get caught. Mercy. The charges got dropped. Mercy. The results were negative. Mercy. The wreck didn't kill you. Mercy. Somebody ought to type mercy in the comments because while we thank God for grace, we sure enough ought to thank him for his mercy. I love the Lord, the psalmist said, because he heard my cry for mercy. And then after declaring that he would call on the name of the Lord, he says in verse 3 that the cords of death entangle me. Now to be entangled is to be in a situation in which it is difficult to escape. Anybody ever been entangled? Here, the psalmist lets us know that his trouble made him feel like he was not going to make it. Perhaps, I don't know, but, but perhaps you're going through that kind of trouble right now. If it ain't one thing, it's another. If it ain't this, it's that. If it ain't that, it's this. But I stop by to tell you that the trouble you're going through now may have you walking around in a daze. But when God is with you, you can be assured that trouble don't last always. I heard the scripture declare that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. And I, I don't know who this is for, but I came to tell somebody that there is nothing too hard for God. Do I have a witness this morning who knows that if you, if you hang in there, Lord have mercy, if you trust God, if you keep praying, if you keep believing, if you keep living right, if you keep putting your trust in God, then God will bring you through what you're going through. Because when it comes to answering prayer, God can and God will. When it comes to fighting your battles, God can and God will. When it comes to walking with you and talking with you, God can and God will. When it comes to standing by you, God can and God will. When it comes to taking care of you and making a way for you and opening doors for you and providing for you and protecting you, God can and God will. I was about to tell you this morning that the psalmist in this text, I love this psalm. I love this psalm. He says in this text, verse 3, the B clause, that there was a time in his life, he basically lets us know when his plight was so pitiful and his distress was so disturbing that he thought he was going to die. But what we have to appreciate about him is that, watch this, instead of dwelling on what almost caused him to die, he comes right back in verse 4 and testifies, Lord have mercy, about what actually caused him to live. Can I preach it like I feel it? He did not dwell on what almost caused him to die. What he dwelled on is what actually caused him to live. For he said in verse 4, I called on the name of the Lord. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that we can call on the name of the Lord. For as the late great Bishop Al uh, Rance Allen said, there's something about the name Jesus. Have you ever had to call on the Lord? I think it was Shirley Caesar said, sometime we have to call him in the morning, sometime late at night, but when you call him and when you get up off your knees, you'll find that everything is all right. He called on the name of the Lord. And God saved him from all of his sorrows. And that prompted, friends, the psalmist to testify. Because you see, when God brings you out of something, when God lifts you up out of something, when God turns your situation around, the first thing we ought to do is turn right back around and give God the praise and give God the glory. Because after God delivered the psalmist, he testifies down in verses 8 and 9. By saying these words, the psalmist said in his testimony, he said, the Lord, Lord have mercy, not me, 
not my friends, not the folk I know. The psalmist said, the Lord has delivered me from death. He delivered my eyes from tears and my feet from stumbling that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Now that's a testimony, y'all. It's a testimony by the psalmist of how God picked him up and turned him around. It's a testimony of how God made a way out of no way. It's a testimony of how God turned his midnight into day. It's a testimony of how God healed his body. Do you have a testimony this morning? I wish that we could be together in worship. I wish that all over this sanctuary we could be together because I believe in my heart that if we were all together this morning, you would be able to testify about the goodness of the Lord but since we're not in here together wherever you are right now may I give you a moment to just reminisce for a moment reminisce about a time when you know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side you would not have come through what you were going through can I give you a moment for just for a second to remember all the times when your back was against the wall but God made a way for you can you remember the times when you didn't know what to do you didn't know how to do it you didn't even know who to go to but you fell down on your knees and you threw up your hands and God heard your prayer can I give you a moment right where you are I know this is a virtual thing I know we're not all together but right where you are can you just thank God that he was always by your side that he's still by your side and can you thank God that his promise is he'll never leave us or forsake us and I know we're going through an unrelenting pandemic and I know it's a terrible time of political polarization right now in our land oh some people are happy about the results of the election some people are sad about the results results. Debts are high. Things are going on. We don't even know how we're going to spend the holidays because of the pandemic. Will we still be able to get together and do our, tra our traditions? We don't know what is going to happen. We're going through some trying times, but I've come to tell you this morning that while this pandemic caught us by surprise, it did not catch God by surprise. And while the political unrest in our nation caught some by surprise it did not catch God by surprise because God knows all and God sees all and the good news for us is that the God we serve y'all know him don't you the God we serve will bring us through and the God we serve is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that is at work within us and I came to tell you that just like he took care of the psalmist in Psalm 116 God can and God will take care of you and me when it comes to making a way be assured that God can and God will because we serve an awesome God and no matter what you're going through God is right there with you right there with you. Nehemiah said the joy of the Lord is your strength. Paul said and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. God can and God will. I know it's old school. I know it's a cliche but I promise you it's the truth. He may not come when you want him to come but do I have a witness out there that God will always be right on time. God is the only one I know of who can show up late in our eyes, but still be right on time. In the words of the old hymn of the church, be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. And so today, be assured that God can and will. Because if the truth be told, God is the only one that can see us through this little song right here will bless your heart today 
and remind you that he can. It'll remind you that he will. I don't know who this message was for today. But I pray that you heard God loud and clear. I pray that like the psalmist, you'll keep your hand in God's hand. And be assured that God can and God will. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It is our prayer today that something said, something you heard, something you experienced during this time of worship has encouraged your heart has given you strength to go on. It's our prayer that you were blessed by being a part of this worship experience. And so we ask you to continue to pray for one another, continue to pray for your church family, continue to hold on to God's hand, and continue to know that God is in charge and in control. God can and God will. We love you. We praise God for you and know that we are praying for you. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Go forth and know that God can and God will. God bless you and be blessed. <laughs>